Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast is not legal advice. The Florida Bar Association says I have to say this. Now I've said it, but nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. Today, I'm going to talk about the carrier's right to offsets, their right to offset VA benefits, Social Security retirement benefits, and rollover distributions of IRAs. So why am I going to talk about this? Because these are the kinds of common questions I get all the time from uh, people who are on disability benefits questioning why there is an offset or a reduction and what, if anything, they can do about it. So we're going to start off by answering the question, can a disability carrier reduce long-term disability benefits by VA benefits that the policyholder was getting before the disability insurance claim was filed? I'm going to talk about how the court approved a disability carrier's reduction of a quadriplegic benefits by a rollover distribution of an IRA. I'm going to talk about how a carrier like Aetna might be able to deduct Social Security retirement benefits from your ERISA long-term disability benefits. And lastly, I'm going to talk about a federal judge who called out a disabled policyholder who refused to give the disability insurance plan information to calculate the offset of settlement monies. Got it? Well, let's take a quick break before we get into this episode. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. A federal judge calls out a policyholder who refuses to give the disability insurance plan information to calculate offset of settlement monies. Now, long-term disability carriers have and plans have provisions in both policies and plans that allow for the reduction of long-term disability benefits by the receipt of other income benefits. A lot of my clients are very upset about this provision and want to hide the ball. I have to tell them you can't hide the ball, and this is why. In the case of Hadid versus SMG long-term disability plan, the court first asked this question, does the plan have the right to an offset? Now, there is no uniform disability policy or plan in the United States, so you've got to, once again, look at your unique policy or plan because that's the starting point. So, In this case, Hadid was the beneficiary of the Hilton Disability Plan that provided for an offset or reduction for the payment of what's called other income benefits. Now, what was the definition of other income? It was the amount of any benefit for the loss of income provided to you or your family as a result of a period of disability for which you are claiming benefits under the policy. And this includes benefits for which you or your family are eligible or that you are paid to you or your family or a third party on your behalf. This definition also went on to say that other income includes any portion of a settlement or judgment minus associated costs of a lawsuit that represents you or compensates you for loss of earnings. Now, I would say that that's pretty clear. The plan did have the right to an offset. So the judge then asked the next question. What's the policyholder's obligation to provide information to the carrier to calculate that offset? And once again, the policy of the plan language can provide that um, information or that answer. This particular policy and plan provided that if the beneficiary was paid other income benefits in the form of a lump sum settlement, the plan beneficiary had to provide proof satisfactory to the carrier of one, the amount attributable to the loss of income, and two, the period covered by the lump sum or settlement. Now, the plan was allowed to prorate the lump sum or the settlement over a certain period of time. Seems to me pretty simple. The plan beneficiary was responsible to provide the proof of the amount of the settlement that was attributable to their loss of income and the period of time covered by that loss. But Hadid wanted to hide the ball because he was thinking, if I don't give them that information, they can't take the offset. Well, boy, was he wrong. The plan provided that 
we're going to assume that the entire sum for the, uh, that is paid out is for the loss of income. And the time is for 60 months, unless you give us any information. Otherwise, we can make a retroactive allocation of any other income benefit. And as a result, this retroactive allocation can result in an overpayment. In other words, you can't hide the ball. And if you try to hide the ball, we're going to assume that the entire sum that you got was for loss of income, not just loss of, of uh, consortium or uh, pain and suffering or past medical bills. We're going to consider it all to be for the total, for the loss of income. And we get to reduce under the terms of the offset provision any money you receive for the loss of income. And we're going to take this allocation and we're going to spread it over 60 months and we're going to reduce your benefits over 60 months. And, and guess what? That's going to result in an overpayment and you're going to owe it back. So ultimately, when Hadid hid the ball and was unhappy that the carrier was offsetting his benefits, he filed a lawsuit in federal court. So what did the judge do? Well, I will tell you, hiding the ball did not impress the federal judge. Disability carriers and plans are not stupid and they're not lazy. They may be dishonest, but you can be assured that they're going to do a public record search and claim index searches. If you've settled a personal injury lawsuit, a workers' comp case, they will find out. Hartford, the plan administrator, found out that Hadid had filed a lawsuit against Hilton and claimed lost income damages that covered the same period he was claiming long-term disability benefits. Now, the public records indicated there was a settlement. So Hartford asked, as they were entitled to, for a copy of the settlement documents and told Hadid that they were going to take some or all of the settlement monies as an offset for lost income. So what did the settlement agreement say about the allocation of the settlement between lost income, pain and suffering, loss of consortium, etc.? Nothing. So Hartford said, look, Hadid, give me your position. Prove to me how much of this settlement was covered for lost income. And he refused. And that was a huge mistake. He had an opportunity, uh, not only at the time he settled his case, to do an allocation, which he should have done, uh, and his lawyer should have consulted with an experienced ERISA disability attorney such as myself to help interpret the plan and help them with the allocation. But Hadid refused to do that and took the position that Hartford wasn't entitled to the offset. Really? The plan language was clear. What Hadid should have done was to provide Hartford with that information and try to clarify what was related to lost income, what was related to everything else, and what period of time was applicable uh, for the, uh, the period of time for this lost income. So because Hadid didn't do anything, Hartford offset the entire amount of the settlement. The judge was not impressed to say the least. And the judge made it really clear that the plan provided for an offset and that Hadid and not Hartford had the burden of proving how much the settlement was attributable to lost income and for what period of time. The judge said, look, you didn't do it. So Hartford has the legal right to allocate the entire settlement amount as being attributable to your lost income and do it over 60 months. Now, the judge noted that Hadid had submitted an expert report in his underlying personal injury litigation of a wage loss in his case against the Hilton that estimated lost wages of $1.2 to $1.3 million. Um, and the judge, again, was not happy that Hadid had um, stonewalled Hartford and not given them that information. So they were allowed to take this settlement attribute all of it to lost wages and prorated over 60 months and reduce his benefits and say, hey, by the way, not only are we reducing your benefits, but we overpaid you, so pay us back. What are the lessons learned? Well, the first lesson here is that you should provide your personal injury or workers' compensation attorney with a copy of the policy and plan to learn first, is there a right to an offset? Two, is the entire settlement offsetable or is the offset limited to just lost wages? What are the responsibilities that you have to you have to provide the disability carrier of the plan with an allocation of the amount of those lost wages in the period of lost wages the settlement covers? The second lesson is to make sure that in every settlement, there's an appropriate allocation and a proof as to how that allocation was calculated 
and explains, of course, any inconsistencies between the ultimate allocation and the settlement demands. You need to have the, the, a consultation with an experienced ERISA disability attorney as your personal injury case is being resolved so that everybody understands what the offset provisions and are, are and how to potentially allocate money in a way to reduce the carrier's offset. It's pretty hard to minimize the impact of the out of, of a case uh, when you haven't done those things, when you haven't learned those two lessons. Now, I will tell you the real problem is going to have your attorney be interested in this issue and working with you to minimize the impact. If your attorney isn't cooperating or isn't interested, it's time for you to contact an experienced or risk disability attorney, such as myself, who can step in on your behalf and say, wait a second, you're not protecting your client's interests, certainly as it relates to this uh, ERISA offset issue. Uh, and let me help you understand the terms of the policy and your responsibilities so that we can arrive at a uh, settlement, settlement language and allocation that will minimize the impact of this offset on your client's long-term disability benefits. Well, we've covered a lot to uh, this episode about offsets, all sorts of different offsets, IRA rollovers, uh, pension benefits, settlements. This is a minefield, so don't fall into a trap. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Winning Isn't Easy. If you've enjoyed this episode, as I'm sure you have, consider liking this page, leaving a review, or sharing it with your friends and family. Please subscribe to the podcast. That way you're going to be notified of the next episode. I hope you tune in for another week of an insightful episode of Winning Isn't Easy. Thanks.